subjective. In all its various forms, it's a tidal wave of daily instructions, daily encouragement, daily subliminal messages to hijack the human mind and the human perception of everything. And when you use that term, mind control, what comes to mind uh, for many is movies like the, um, the Manchurian Candidate, where someone is uh, mind controlled to be an assassin or something. Uh, and my goodness me, those people exist on a uh, very large scale, to say the least. But mind control is much more than that. It is simply about persuading people that the perception the manipulators want is the one they should believe in. It's like putting people in a, in a bubble, a bit like this, this image, where only the perceptions of the bubble are accepted and believed in by the target population, the target individual. And everything outside of that is not part of the perception process. And therefore, if you, if you uh, look at it on that basis, mind control is simply getting people to believe what the mind controllers want them to believe. That's it. And therefore, what comes from belief, what comes from perception, behavior. What people will do, what they won't do, what they'll accept, what they won't accept, what they'll support, what they won't support. And therefore, on that basis, the mainstream media, when it tells you things that are not true, which is most of the time, is a mind control operation. When you look at um, the education system, where children from the earliest age are put into this conveyor belt of perception, downloaded manipulation of perception, they are told day after day, month after month, year after year of their entire formative years, the system's version of everything, at the exclusion of so much that would put that system version in a new light, a very questioning one. And so the education system is also mind control. It's perception control. It's giving you the state's version of what the state wants you to believe. And this whole thing about fake news, which is nothing more than attack on the, uh, the alternative media, uh, is a protection mechanism for the mind control. Because if you are trying to uh, develop and install perceptions of everything in the population, then you need to control as much as you can the sources of information that population is receiving. If it gets other information, putting the same subjects or situations in a different light, looking at it in a different way, then your perception download comes under question because people see that there is actually another way of seeing it. And so we have this uh, very uh, topical area now and ever gathering so, called censorship, which can be seen in this light and from this perspective. Censorship is simply blocking information that would challenge that which is um, desired that the population believe without question. And in that way, uh, journalists, uh, scientists, doctors, the whole shebang politicians are actually 
mind controllers because what they're doing is giving an aversion of events, aversion of everything at the exclusion of other possibility to bring about a perception of the population that suits the system. And the vast, overwhelming majority of those people, journalists, scientists, doctors, politicians, and so on, will have no idea whatsoever that that's what they're doing. Some politicians, obviously, will be more aware, but and one or two journalists will be more aware, but most of them are not. They're just doing what the system uh, insists that they do, and thus playing their part in this whole perception manipulation while themselves being perceptually manipulated. Uh, they have a, 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 um, a system within the, the deep government military mind control uh, projects, which do produce people like Manchurian candidates, where they program people to become programs of, uh, programmers of other people. Uh, and so the number of programmers um, increases as, as people are programmed to program. I've met them. And in terms of the general population, that is what's going on. Journalists who uh, give people a false view of um, information and the world Scientists, a false view of reality and possibility. Doctors, a false view of how you can treat illness, uh, i.e. whatever Big Pharma tells them. Uh, all these things, politicians who want to get you to believe um, their version of events for their own interests, these are all programmed people programming other people. Like I say, there will be some key ones who are absolutely knowingly doing it but the vast majority are not they're just caught in the web and when you look at these deep uh, government military mind control programs way out of the public eye uh, almost all the time and I've um, studied these like I say in, in great depth uh, over the years both sides of the Atlantic um, when you see how they work you can then see how the same patterns, the same methods, are actually played out on the general population. Um, one of the most famous, in fact, the most famous uh, mind control project that has uh, come to light was in the United States. It was known as MK Ultra, still going, just under other names, uh, other names. But MK Ultra uh, came to light in the public arena when. Um, it was revealed how um, this project, which was vast uh, in institutions, universities, psychiatric um, operations in the United States and Canada, that was actually uh, experimenting on the minds of uh, their targets and their uh, laboratory uh, rats, in other words, called human beings, they were um, experimenting on how to completely take over someone's mind, how to wipe their mind of um, what was there before, memories that were there before. One woman in MK Ultra had to be taught afterwards how to go to the toilet again. So wiped had her mind been by these crazies, these insane people that are running our world and a lot of the um, MK Ultra operation was uh, run by Nazis from Nazi Germany who uh, at the end of the war through something called Operation Paperclip were um, helped to escape out of Germany and they ended up in the United States. Uh, they were mind controllers, they were genetic manipulators, they were engineers. It's these Nazi engineers and scientists that started NASA. They created it. 
And one of them, a guy called Werner von Braun, um, who was a Nazi party member, a member of the SS, who um, was the scientist uh, engineer that developed the V2 rockets that were dropping on London during the Second World War. He, when he was uh, moved to America under Operation Paperclip, was the man who developed the Saturn V booster rockets for the Apollo moon program. This um, uh, group of Nazis um, that were allowed to escape to the United States, and of course, some to South America, um, included those uh, people that were focused on mind control. And it was they that created uh, MK Ultra, And uh, one of them was Joseph Mengele, uh, the angel of death in the concentration camps, who operated in the United States after the war uh, under the name Dr. Green. And he was massively, massively central and part of MK Ultra, And uh, he operated in South America as well. And I've um, spoken over the years to many people uh, who um, came out of MK Ultra and uh, its elite um, project offshoot, uh, known as Project Monarch, and most of them didn't come out because they were killed or their their minds were completely broken, deleted. But those I have spoken to have told a very uh, compellingly um, common and multiply supporting uh, account of MK Ultra Project Monarch and um, what happened to them. And this is how this kind of mind control works. And it will become very relevant to the way it's done on a mass scale in a minute. MK Ultra was founded on a technique that they call trauma-based mind control. This means that they traumatize people from the earliest age. They want them as a, as a, a young child before the, the brain is fully uh, uh, formed. Um, and they subject them to horrors. It could be watching a child sacrificed, watching an animal sacrificed. Um, it could be making them participate in stuff like that. It could be finding um, what terrifies them more than anything, say a fear of snakes, a fear of spiders, and then putting them in an enclosed space with exactly what they are terrified of. And what the mind does to protect itself is it walls off those memories of extreme trauma. It creates um, like a honeycomb, uh, symbolically, in the mind of closed compartments behind which that memory is held. So the conscious mind um, is not constantly reliving it. Um, this is uh, seen when people have a, a terrible road accident and they can never remember the, the actual impact and the aftermath because the mind has um, compartmentalized it and put a firewall around it, if you like. And what these mind manipulators then do is exploit this. It's called... Um, dissociative identity disorder used to be called multiple personality disorder and they um, program these compartments which in their mind control parlance they call alters as in altered states of awareness with um, other quote personalities and um, instructions um, and so what they do with these people is create what they call a front altar. That's the, 
the conscious mind uh, most of the time. It's the personality that people who interact with them will believe is them. But in um, the subconscious are all these self-contained sub compartments called alters, which are um, which are given instructions, behavior instructions, perception instructions, and they stay there, not imposing and impacting upon what the person does or thinks until particular uh, triggers are given. That's what they call them, triggers. It could be a trigger word, a trigger phrase, a trigger sound, even a trigger image. And once that is given, that back altar, as they call them, uh, then becomes the front altar, and the front altar goes into the subconscious. Now, the um, back altar as the front altar is dictating that person's perception and dictating that person's actions. And this is used um, for um, very famous people to sexually and violently abuse uh, children uh, with a back altar. And then the back altar is pushed back into the subconscious. The front altar then uh, becomes the conscious mind again. The front altar has no memory whatsoever of that abuse. And this is how um, these people are protected. Um, they can be used for assassination, where someone um, is going about their business, then the trigger uh, is given the program to assassinate altar becomes the front altar and they play out the assassination look at some of these people I mean the classic is Sahan Sahan who's still um, in jail for um, killing um, Bobby Kennedy JFK's brother when, when you look at the, the background and the evidence it's quite demonstrable that he was under mind control and didn't actually, it's another story another day, didn't actually kill him, someone else did. But he was there in the wrong place at the wrong time, so he could be convicted by it. And when you look at his background, and I have many years ago in detail, on what happened that night, and you look at the psychiatric reports um, about him, it's clearly uh, the case that he was under mind control, a classic, if you like, Manchurian candidate. Uh, program you can um, use these same techniques to program someone to carry out a terrorist attack and over and over and over again you see people involved particularly in America in mass shootings which of course traumatize the population among many other things who are clearly um, under forms of mind control and were triggered to do it when you look at the background um, evidence so when you um, when you look at these possibilities and you look at world events you can start to see another possibility of why people did and do what they what they what they do in terms of these um, assassinations and these terrorist uh, attacks and presidents and other um, various leaders of society are also put under forms of mind control and perception control. Um, they don't want um, any surprises the cabal that's behind all this they want to be able to control everything without any surprises that that make things blow up in their face so they want to control through um, mind manipulation all the different players as much as they can that doesn't mean it applies to everybody but it applies to far more than people would um, would even begin to believe I mean I look at some of these uh, names in Silicon Valley and, and when I observe them I see classic traits of um, of mind control and 
when you then play this out, this, if you like, individual perception installation, you play that out across the general population, you see, like I said earlier, the same techniques um, happening all the time. See, the, one of the key reasons they use trauma, there are many reasons, make, creating the altars for a start, but one of the other key reasons is that when people are in a state of trauma, they become far more suggestible. Um, they are open to their perceptions being um, fundamentally influenced when they're in a state of trauma. So when you look at 9-11, when you look at terrorist attacks, um, assassinations, wars, and all these other um, trauma-creating, uh, trauma-triggering events and happenings, then at that time, the population in general, in its stage of trauma in reacting to what's going on, becomes more suggestible, more suggestible to what the politicians and the authorities say must happen because of what has gone on, what has caused the trauma. It's um, happening um, all the time if, if you come from this perspective of appreciating how it works. Then you look at religion. What is religion? It's mind control. It is, as I've said for many years, the greatest form of mind control ever invented. Look at how people's lives, people's perceptions, thus their lives, are completely controlled by their religious belief. Whether it's Christianity in its extreme forms, whether it's uh, Judaism, whether it's um, um, Islam, whether it's Hinduism, you see lives completely controlled from cradle to grave by a unyielding, unquestioning belief in religion, whichever religion they are focused upon, and it's based on what? It's based on perception control completely. Everything I need to know is between the covers of this book. Anything outside of it can't be true. I mean, it's... It's a head shaker, really. But it's also implanted by fear. Fear of not doing what the God wants, whatever it is. Um, 